Only 30 years after the first embassy missionaries landed in Matupit Island, Peter Torot was born in Rakunai in 1912. His father, Tupuya, was one of the first to be baptized by these first missionaries. Hello, welcome to Science of the Times. In this edition, we will celebrate 100 years of the birth of Blessed Peter Torot. East New Britain province received the papal's blessing again during the visit of Cardinal Joseph Zhang Zekiun, Bishop Emeritus of Hong Kong, China. Cardinal Zan was appointed by His Holiness Pope Benedict XVI as his special envoy to celebrations marking the centenary of the birth of Blessed Peter Torot, the catechist and martyr of Papua New Guinea. Cardinal Zen was accompanied by the new Apostolic Nuncio to Papua New Guinea, Archbishop Santo Gengemi, to Rabal on Friday 6, July 2012, and they were warmly welcomed at Tokwa Airport by the special mission, which include Bishop Rokus Tatamai of Berena Diocese and Father Francis Melli, the Judicial Vicar of the Archdiocese of Rabal. Archbishop Francesco Pamphilo, retired Archbishop Carl Hesse, catechist, students and the Catholic faithful of the Archdiocese were also there to present the spirit of Rabaul to the Rome Special Envoy. Cardinal Zan retired from being Bishop of Hong Kong in April 2009, but he is known to be the new conscience of Hong Kong. He is famous for being outspoken on issues regarding human rights, political freedom and religious liberty, which he often get criticisms from the Communist Party of China. the venerable servant of God, Peter Turo, shall hereafter be invoked as blessed, and that his feast shall be celebrated every year on the seventh day of July in the places and according to the norms established by the church law. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. July 7 was declared by the late Pope, Blessed John Paul II, as a day to remember the martyrdom of Blessed Peter Torot. And in Rakunai, special celebrations are held every year at the Basilica. Pilgrims from around PNG travel into Rakunai to learn and see the birthplaces of Blessed Peter Torot. <laughs> 
Celebrations were focused on the birth of the martyr, and Cardinal Zan presided on the centenary mass celebrations. The theme was renewal of family life. For celebrating with the Cardinal were Archbishop Francisco Pamphilo, Apostolic Nuncio Santo Gengami, retired Archbishop Carl Hesse and Bishop Rocco Statamai. Priests from around the Archdiocese also celebrated with the Cardinal. The basilica was packed to capacity. People also had mixed feelings about the cardinal's visit as they wanted to know about the process of Peter Torot's sainthood. But the cardinal extended the Holy Father's warmest greetings. Blessed Peter Torot was asked and willingly accepted from his pastor to be the substitute, to take care of his flock. He courageously took up his mission, fully conscious of its dangers. He was disobeying the orders of the occupying power. He led prayer meetings, instructed people in catechism, administered baptism, cared for the Eucharist, distributed it to the sick and dying, consoled and helped the poor, including the missionaries in the concentration camp. He buried the dead. He prepared and witnessed marriages. He tried to be very careful, to be discreet, but his activity could not escape the surveillance of the invading mil militaries and their spies. What most fueled the hatred of the enemies of the gospel was his un uncompromising opposition to the evil plan of allowing a man, especially an already married one, to take a second wife and even somebody else's wife. Marriage and family have a very important place in every culture. And in the gospel, Jesus has taught us to go back to the beginning of creation, to the original plan of God, that the family be founded on a marriage between one man and one woman, an exclusive and indissoluble love, a total mutual offering of one another. In the case of baptized Christians, the marriage is a covenant which has been raised by Christ to the supernatural level of a sacrament, the symbol of Christ's union with his church. The firm stand of blessed Peter Toro in defending the sacred nature of marriage was the last straw which brought to the decision of his cold blooded murder. In his letter, Pope Benedict XVI emphasized our blessed mother, emphasized his courage and compared him to St. John the Baptist, who said to Herod, non licet, it is not allowed for you to take for yourself the wife of your brother. The Supreme Pontiff emphasized the importance of this heroic witness 
for mankind today. Because nowadays, the sacred institution of matrimony is being threatened from all sides. While it is for everybody to see how much suffering the broken families are causing to people, especially children. Dear brothers and sisters, let us rejoice in celebrating the fertile flower of Papua New Guinea. This powerful factor for the new evangelization, as the Pope here said in his letter. Let us ask for the grace of being able to imitate the heroic virtues of blessed Peter Toro, his example in following Christ with fidelity. Be sure of the spiritual presence of the Holy Father today in our midst and of his affection for each of you. I'm happy to be his messenger. In his name, I like to offer also my most respectful greeting to the civil authorities and to our friends, followers of other religion. Also on this occasion, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Japan apologized through a letter presented by Archbishop Pamphilo on behalf of the people of Japan. To all of you in Papua New Guinea, on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the birth of Blessed Peter Torot, I would like to convey a message of apology to all of you in Papua New Guinea from Japan, which is responsible for his death. First of all, I would like to reflect on Blessed Peter Torot's life for a while. Since Oceania covers a vast area, it is difficult for the Catholic Church to proclaim the gospel there. When Peter Torot was young, missionaries were, were rarely seen in Oceania. So he started to study to become a catechist. He was a model student, respecting the sacraments, praying regularly, and working hard as a faithful. After graduation, he was qualified as a catechist by his bishop and started to work earnestly at once. He married Paula Varpit, a young Catholic from a neighboring village and live an ideal family life. During World War II, Japanese troops invaded Papua New Guinea and imprisoned priests and the religious, whose number was already limited in a concentration camp. He assumed responsibility as a catechist since there was no priest around and devoted himself to pastoral services such as ministering infant baptism and funerals and assisting at marriages. Japanese troops even interfered in the church's activities and destroyed church buildings. They even forbade some systems based on the Catholic teaching, especially monogamy, and forced people to return to polygamy. However, Peter Torot strongly insisted about his own marriage, that the original meaning of marriage is being united by God, and it must be fulfilled only when married couples are united as one. He decisively refused to change this view, so that he was arrested, imprisoned, tortured, and killed. Japan is not a Christian country now, as it was not then. Catholics and Protestants in total account for only 0.09% of its population. Therefore, the views on humanity and human life are totally different from those of Christian nations. The Japanese military during World War II did not share the Christian view on marriage at all. Putting aside the difference in, religio in religions and ideologies, it is true that Japan inflicted enormous damage from a humanitarian perspective 
of many nations, including Papua New Guinea. Japan deprived Peter Torot of his precious life by yielding in humane power at will. I convey my heartfelt apology for such conducts on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the life of blessed Peter Torot. As a Japanese bishop, I would like to offer a mass and prayers on the anniversary day. Sign Leo Jun Ikenaga SJ, President of the Catholic Bishops Conference of Japan. The Federation of the Catholic Bishops Conferences of Oceania also sent greetings on the centenary of the Blessed. On behalf of the Bishops of Oceania Federation, I wanted to wish you every blessing and hope that it is a weekend of prayer and community celebrations which remembers Blessed Peter Torot and give thanks for the great example that he has been in his life and since his beatification in 1995. I remember with fondness visiting the shrine of Blessed Peter Torot during our Federation Assembly in Rabaul in 2002. That in itself was a wonderful experience for all of the bishops who have traveled to Rabaul to participate in the Federation Assembly and was a highlight of the Assembly. Please know that you will be remembered in prayer over this coming weekend as the Church in Rabaul celebrate 100 years since the birth of Blessed Peter Torot. With all good wishes and every blessing, yours sincerely in the Lord, John A. Jew, Archbishop of Wellington, President, Federation of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Oceania. I would like to be blessed by you uh, because you are uh, the countryman of the blessed huh? and uh, you are full of spirit. Huh? But since the Holy Father has sent me, so I give you his blessing. Huh? So let the blessing of the Holy Father come upon you, all the present inside and outside, huh? all your dear ones, if anybody sick in the family, the old people, the children, let us be full of hope that by the intercession of the blessed Peter, we have abundance of divine grace. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater et filius et spiritus sanctus. Amen. The Holy Father Benedict XVI cordially imparts the apostolic blessing to, and there will be the name of the catechist, in the Archdiocese of Rabaul, on the centenary year of the birth of Blessed Peter Torot, catechist and martyr, and through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, invokes an abundance of divine graces. And then, together with the certificate, there will be given also a rosary. Both things come from the house of Benedict XVI.
after the mass celebrations, Cardinal Zan visited the memorial sites of Blessed Peter Torot and he also visited Rabal Town and Matupit Island where the first missionaries first landed. Cardinal Zan was born in Sangai in 1932 to devoutly Catholic parents, Vincent Zan and Margaret Steele. He did most of his studies in church schools during the Second Sino-Japanese War, but was sent to an abbey after his father suffered a stroke. Zan fled to Hong Kong from Shanghai to escape communist rule at the end of the Chinese Civil War. He joined the Salesians in Hong Kong novitiate and was ordained to priesthood in 1961. He served as the sixth bishop of Hong Kong and was elevated to the cardinalate in 2006. Okay, the bishop is the center, but then the officials of the government. Huh? Cardinal Zan also had time during his short visit to talk to the religious and lay people at Vunapope about the situation of the Catholic Church in China. He later met with the Chinese community in Vunapope. There was a boy wonderful. He was there five years, and everybody happy with him. He's good in piety, prayed well, uh, very good in studies, and uh, very good in sports, uh, and very good in relation with the superiors, very good relation with everybody. So he was supposed to go to the novitiate. But then, one well, morning, he disappeared. And he left a letter to the superiors. He said, oh, dear superiors, I'm very sorry. I have to tell you that I am a spy. I'm a spy sent by the communists. I've been all these years here, and you treated me so well. I, I really cannot go on like that. So I'm going back. I may be punished, but I'm going back. <laughs> 